गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास सायराम टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज यंग्स डबल स्लिट एक्सपेरिमेंट इन दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट बेसिकली वी हैव वन लाइट सोर्स हेयर वी हैव वन सोर्स ऑफ डिस्टरबेंस और सोर्स ऑफ लाइट यू कैन से देन फ्रॉम दिस सोर्स ऑफ लाइट सम रेज विल अपीयर इन दिस फॉर्म एंड दे पास बाय अ सिंगल स्लिट आफ्टर दैट वी हैव वन मोर फ्रेम इन फ्रंट ऑफ द फर्स्ट फ्रेम and there we have made two uh, double slits first and second basically some space is provided in this particular region okay and from this region your rays of light will pass and they will interfere and uh, it will form some uh, pattern like this that alternate bright and dark fringe we will uh, observe on the screen so this was the experiment performed by a scientist called young and uh, in this experiment we can uh, make a rough diagram also or you can say that we can make two dimensional diagram for this uh, for which we will have a source and from this source of light two wave front will come in form of ss1 and ss2 and these wave front will pass through these two slits and interference occurs at this particular point now we have to check whether this is your bright fringe or dark fringe for that we have considered that this our screen is at a distance of you can say a capital d from our two slits then uh, distance between these two holes or these two slits is considered small d then this length will be d by 2 and this will also be d by 2 suppose this p point is located at a distance y from the center o okay so first of all we have to calculate path difference from wave s1 uh, p and s2 p okay uh, and uh, path difference will become s2 p minus s1 p as in diagram you can see that uh, s2 p is the path traveled by the second wave this is the second path and uh, distance traveled by the first wave will be this one s1 p okay and their difference will be this much distance we have to calculate how much distance is it okay now here you can understand that path difference is mentioned in form of s2 p minus s1 p so in the triangle this in this triangle s1 p can be written as this base square that is d square plus this perpendicular square that is y minus d by 2 and its whole square okay so and similarly s2 p we can write s2 p is again your perpendicular that is y plus d by 2 here you can see this is y plus d by 2 its whole square plus base square that is d square so it is mentioned here d square this is value of s2 p square minus s1 p square will be how much that is d square base square plus perpendicular is y minus d by 2 whole square if you will solve this this uh, first term a square b square all these term will be cancel out and only uh, term that is 2 ab will remain okay so here b is uh, d by 2 we will get 2 by d only okay so here we can apply s2 p square minus s1 p square equal to uh, s2 p minus s1 p as a minus b into a plus b okay now this s2 p this is assumed almost equal to d okay and s1 p is also assumed almost equal to d so we can write it 2d here so your part difference will become 2y d upon 2d that is y d upon capital d now we have to look for position of bright fringes for bright fringe we know that part difference that is y d upon d that should be equal to n lambda and where n is your 0 1 2 3 etc and uh, if you will put n equal to 0 then you will get first bright fringe that is at a distance of 0 meter and uh, the first bright fringe you can say this is central bright fringe and when you want to obtain first bright fringe then you will put n equal to 1 
then you will get y1 equal to d lambda upon d because you will replace n by 1 and so on you can get uh, any particular bright fringe from the center. Now if you want to look for a uh, dark fringe that is position of dark fringe for that we can say that your part difference should be equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 or it should be multiple of lambda by 2 here your n equal to 0 1 2 3 etc. So first bright fringe you will get at n equal to 0 that is d lambda upon 2d. Now if you put n equal to 1 here then you will get the second bright second dark fringe that is 3d lambda upon 2d and so on. Now we have expression for dark fringe width. For that we calculate yn that is nth bright fringe and we subtract distance of n minus 1 bright fringe because that will be width of nth bright fringe. So for n we have formula n d lambda by small d and for n minus 1 bright fringe we have n minus 1 d lambda upon d. If you will solve this you will get this expression that beta equal to d lambda upon d. For dark fringe also you will get the same width that is uh, d lambda upon small d. Okay, You have to put n equal to n plus 1 first or n equal to n then n equal to n minus 1 means alternate uh, numbers you have to consider. Then here we have to plot a graph for distribution of intensity. So we know that at the center at the center point your intensity should be maximum because we get here bright fringe okay that's why this graph is showing maximum value and after that we will get first dark fringe so your graph is showing the minimum intensity at this value or you can say i equal to zero and so on these are first second third and fourth and so on these are bright fringes and here you can see first second third fourth dark fringes and similarly to the left side also you will get the same pattern. Now we know that maximum intensity is proportional to uh, that is amplitude square or amplitude of first and amplitude of second wave. So it will be equal to 4a square. For all the bright fringe that have uh, this intensity and i minimum will be 0 because minimum intensity will be 0. All the dark fringe have 0 intensity okay that is understood. Now here are some conditions then in which condition we will get uh, interference. First condition is that two source producing interference must be coherent and uh, after that means basically there should not be a phase difference and second second thing is that two interfering wave trains must have the same plane of polarization. Basically it means to say that both the uh, both the wavelets should have the same plane okay same plane of polarization or you can understand uh, like uh, both should have same plane third point is that the two source must be very close to each other that means that d should be very very less okay only then we can assume that uh, that s2p and s1p both were uh, capital d and basically we uh, obtain interference only if your sources are very close to each other because only in that condition your uh, interference of these uh, secondary wavelets like in this way you will get this uh, interference is possible or this intersection of this secondary wavelet is possible if sources are close to each other and uh, source must be monochromatic means a single color light should be used otherwise the fringes will be uh, of different color will overlap uh, fifth point is that the two waves must be uh, must be having the same amplitude for better contrast between bright and dark fringes next thing we have to understand that is diffraction of light basically in uh, simple language we can say that diffraction is what uh, if light is coming from any particular source and if we provide any obstacle in front of this light suppose this slit is provided here and here okay then at the corners basically at these corners light get diffracted okay it spread in a greater reason or in a larger reason compared to the previous one and uh, if suppose if you provide only single obstacle 
then suppose this was the uh, projected path then you will see some extra some more portion uh, will be obtained because light will get diffracted by the corner it will basically bend okay at the corners so such phenomena is called diffraction of light and it is uh, possible because light shows a wave nature uh, for this reason so how diffraction uh, occurs basically what we obtain in our diffraction pattern suppose if you provide a single slit that slit that is small hole that is provided that is called slit we are trying to see this small hole with the help of in the magnified view you can say then we have provided this slit we have uh, divided this slit into these many points suppose 0 to 12 points okay now one planar wave front is incident this is your planar wave front that incident on this slit now we have provided a convex lens and we know that these parallel rays will try to focus at any particular point and we will get a central bright fringe and uh, this is your screen and distance from screen to slit we have considered capital D and uh, slit width we have considered small d okay so at the center we will get the maximum light or maximum intensity so we call it central bright fringe now we have to see where our dark fringe and alternate bright fringe will appear now suppose if we have another angle if we talk about another wave coming from this single slit okay then they may form somewhere here suppose this is your first dark fringe of wherever you got dark fringe that point you name you can name that is p1 and suppose this angle is theta 1 here here and here okay all these three angles are theta 1 so in this case we know that why we are getting part uh, why we are getting da uh, dark fringe here because there will be some uh, kind of interference that uh, this part difference b to n we have considered lambda okay and half path will be lambda by 2 so each wave from 0 to 6 or 0 to 5 0 to 6 you can say each wave from 0 to 6 and uh, then 6 to 12 they will cancel out to each other or they will meet at an angle of 180 degree of phase or phase of pi so that at p1 we will get dark fringe here you can read that the wavelet from the single wave front diffract at an angle theta 1 such that bn equal to lambda and reach at the point p1 the first pair that is 0 6 then 1 7 2 8 3 9 all such pair and last pair is what 6 to 12 they inter uh, they interfere destructively because part difference is lambda by 2 and we know for this part difference your uh, minimum your minima will occur or basically interference of wave will give you the minimum intensity and you will get dark fringe and uh, at the second for the second dark fringe suppose your angle is theta by 2 uh, or theta 2 you can say then you will uh, you will uh, divide this whole slit into four part one the base is 2 lambda then the half will be lambda here you will get uh, 3 by 2 lambda or 1.5 lambda then lambda by 2 each portion of light from all these four sections will cancel to each other and we will get the second dark fringe so how we will get derivation for this similarly for bright also you can see for bright we have to divide this into three portion first portion then second portion and then third portion okay and uh, this part difference we have to consider 3 lambda by 2 here we will get uh, here we will get uh, lambda by 2 and here we will get lambda by here in the second section we are getting lambda and here lambda by 2 so each light from the first portion and from the second portion will cancel out to each other but the third portion re will remain as it is that's why we are getting some kind of uh, light over here because third section this particular section will not be cancelled out however the second section you can say and the first section they will cancel out each other okay so that's why you are getting bright fringe at that point so for bright fringe you can say your part difference for first bright fringe your part difference is 3 lambda by 2 however here for dark fringe okay this is second dark fringe and this is the first dark fringe for first dark fringe you are taking the part difference 
that is lambda. So here we know that our part difference for theta one we can see for nth secondary uh, minima your part difference will be lambda. And if your th angle is theta one means we are talking about first lambda, then part difference should be one lambda. For second minima part difference should be two lambda, and for third it should be n lambda. Okay. So in case of nth right fringe, we can take sine theta n, and this will be d. Uh, for getting part difference in terms of sine theta, you can apply uh, you can apply that uh, trigonometry or uh, ratio sine theta etc. Sine theta cos theta. Suppose here it is taking the for the second lambda, second part a uh, second dark fringe. So you can apply here sine theta two. This angle is theta two, so this will also be theta two. So sine theta two equal to perpendicular this perpendicular. Upon this hypotenuse, okay. So sine theta two will become how much? It will become your part difference that is b two n upon your uh, distance that is cylinder width or hypotenuse that is d. So in cross multiply, you will get b n equal to how much? That is d sine theta two. Okay, that's why it is saying here that d sine theta equal to n lambda. This is formula for Your dark fringe, and this one is for your brighter fringe. Now, if you want to calculate uh, width of the central maxima or central bright fringe, then we can apply this formula. That uh, in trigonometry we say that tan theta equal to perpendicular upon base. Uh, perpendicular will be by one because central bright fringe will exist. Between uh, two alternate dark fringes. Okay, suppose here you have first dark fringe, here you have second dark fringe, and between them you will have what? You will have a bright fringe. So central bright fringe. For central bright fringe, we will first calculate this half distance y one. Then we will make its double to get our total width. And to get this perpendicular y one, we can apply tan theta. For a small angle, this theta one equal to perpendicular y one upon d. So we can say that d sine theta equal to lambda, and uh, theta equal to lambda upon d, because theta is very very small. So from here you can get your uh, expression that is beta equal to two d lambda upon small d, because in the first equation here you can see this y one is capital D into theta one. And theta one we have got that is how much lambda upon d. So this is your formula, and uh, we have to this is actually y one. We have to make its double as I told you to get two y one because two y one is your basically uh, width of the central maxima that is upper half and lower half. That's why it is getting uh, formula that is two d lambda upon small d. Now we have the next topic that is called Fresnel's uh, distance. So what is it? Fresnel's distance is that distance from the slit at which spreading of the light due to diffraction becomes equal to the size of the slit. Okay. So basically, uh, for that we can consider that y one equal to d lambda upon d. So Fresnel's distance y one equal to small d that is slit width when your d D will be represented by DF Fresnel's distance. Okay, so we can write this uh, D will become DF then DF lambda upon small d. Okay, and this y one, this half width, this should be equal to small d because it is saying that uh, from the slit at which spreading, okay, of light of diffraction becomes equal to the size of the slit. So this will become D. So from here we can get D F equal to small D square upon lambda because this will be multiplied here, D square upon lambda. Next we have difference between interference and diffraction. 
so you can understand that interference is due to the superposition of two different wave trains coming from coherent while diffraction is what that is uh, superposition of secondary wavelet from different part of the same wavefront okay and uh, for second point friend width is generally constant but here we are getting basically variable or you can say decreasing width second is third is that all the maxima have the same intensity here as i told you that uh, central width will be maximum then after that we will get a decreasing pattern so that's why like this so that's why we will say that the central maxima maxima are of variable intensities so there is a good contrast between the maxima and minima while there is a poor contrast between maxima and minima okay so this was all for interference and diffraction difference okay thank you sairam